At least 70 people have been killed and dozens of houses torched in fresh clashes between Muslim and Christian communities in a town in Central African Republic. Although the leader of the rebel Muslim force known as Seleka stepped down as president last month, it's failed to halt waves of tit-for-tat killings. This man spoke of his bitterness over the failure to find peace. We're losing our homes and so many people. We want to find peace, he says. The scale of the violence highlights the challenge facing French and African peacekeepers trying to restore order to a country that's been torn apart by intercommunal violence since mainly Muslim rebels seized power in March. This is how we live in Central Africa. I can sell this air conditioning motor for between one and one and a half euros and afford to live with my child, this man says. French and African peacekeepers have been focused on restoring order to the capital Bangui and have struggled to make their presence felt to the north. The Red Cross says at least 300 people have been killed in the latest spasm of bloodshed in the Central African Republic. The organization has added that the death toll could rise significantly after the work to collect bodies resumes on Saturday. Now, the killings occurred on Tuesday and Wednesday when Christian militias who support ousted President Franco Bouzizé attacked several Muslim neighborhoods. Meanwhile, the French military has sent reinforcements to the CAR, its former colony, for an intervention authorized by the UN. The campaign could target Muslim fighters who have been ruling the country since the ouster of Bouzizé uh, last March. Now, European Commission President Jose Manuel Barroso says the European Union has unblocked 50 million euros to support the military operations in CAR. French troops try to restore order in an area of the capital, Bangui. This is a mainly Muslim neighborhood. People here are afraid after their homes were looted and burned down. When peacekeepers arrived, they and other residents found themselves caught in the middle of another battle between Christian and Muslim militias. It's terrible. We are suffering. There is no peace. We're losing houses and people. We need to bring back peace. In the south of the country, here in the town of Boda, a Christian priest says that in the past week alone, the number of people killed in sectarian violence was at least 75. The head of the National Red Cross couldn't confirm that number, but he said a team has been sent to Boda to recover bodies. The Red Cross added an average of 15 people a day are being killed throughout the country, but that figure could be much higher. It's prompted another appeal from the new interim president, seen here visiting people who have been displaced by months of deadly violence. She's tasked with steering the country towards elections, but her immediate goal is to stop the revenge attacks. I am your mother and you are all my children, whether you do good or bad. I will not reject you, but embrace and advise you. Please do not allow bad people to divide you. But for the time being, the country is divided. French and African troops have struggled to restore order. It's prompted the UN to call for a larger peacekeeping force and stop the country heading towards a humanitarian disaster. Alpha Battelle, BBC News. Well, as you know, Central Africa has been in chaos since March 2013. Uh, since the Selika uh, came and threw out President Mozizi. And uh, the uh, majority Christian uh, people were thrown into conflict. Now, um, we've seen that uh, the bloodshed has been limited, but now the EU thinks we're going to need 10,000 people to stabilize a country in the middle of an ethnic or religious war, or the UN uh, considers that's how many we need, but the EU is promising only 500 uh, men. It's just a cosmetic exercise. 
trying to prove that Baroness Ashton has some use. I think, really, we should just leave it up to the French army and promise them co-financing, and I'm completely in agreement with what Mr Van Orden said. France and its army knows this country and uh, have done enough to uh, make sure that they would not be embarrassed by non-Francophone forces not prepared for the terrain. So let us allow uh, countries to act in where they know the territory and where they actually are best placed to actually achieve um, uh, efficient results, which you couldn't say the same thing for European officials. The situation in the Central African Republic remains poised on a knife's edge. The UN High Commissioner for Human Rights warned, we simply cannot let the social fabric of this country be torn apart. The election of the transitional president, Catherine Sambapanza, on January 20th has raised some hopes, but a vicious vigilante war between Christians and Muslims continues, and it's spreading. Some of the main Muslim militia leaders have been escorted out of the capital, Bangui, this week, but will they just intensify the fight wherever they end up? The terrorized people continue to flee the battle zones, and while French and African Union forces have tried to stem the violence, they have not been able to stop it. The U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry now talks of targeted sanctions against those who further stabilize the situation or pursue their own selfish ends by abetting or encouraging the violence. And the United States is calling for community leaders to step up to the plate. Two of them are... Dieudonné Zapalanga, the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Bangui, and Imam Omar Kobin Layama, who is the leader of the Islamic community there. They are publicly petitioning for a UN peacekeeping force to stop what happened in Rwanda 20 years ago from happening in the CAR today. After delivering their letter to the Prime Minister's office here at 10 Downing Street, they join me in the studio to explain why they are putting themselves on the line for peace. Welcome to the program. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. So this is the letter that you have uh, delivered to the Prime Minister of Great Britain, to David Cameron. The EU has authorized uh, EU force to go to the Central African Republic. I don't know when that's going to happen. What do you think that a peacekeeping force could actually do? A peacekeeping force that arrives will already be able to stop all those who have weapons. A peacekeeping force that arrives will allow the politicians to hold campaigns in security. A peacekeeping force that arrives will also allow the humanitarian workers to travel inside the country, it will allow children to go back to school and patients to receive medicine. Currently the country is paralyzed and we believe that a peacekeeping force is welcome for redeployment, for a reconstruction, for a preparation of elections, and to allow peace to return to the Central African Republic. I am going to play you a little bit of an interview that I did with UN Ambassador Samantha Power from the United States about a peacekeeping mission. I asked her last month whether there would be a UN peacekeeping mission. Listen to what she said. You know, one of the reasons that the President asked me to take the trip here is to assess the situation up front to try to look ahead and see what will be needed. Uh, the Africans here speak with great assurance of their ability, uh, once they are especially at uh, full strength, to bring the situation uh, uh, under, under control. But I think, again, it's very important that we walk and chew gum at the same time. If there were a peace to keep, and one could, and it, it was deemed necessary to bring in a peacekeeping mission, that we'd be in a position to do that more quickly than otherwise. You heard what the ambassador said. You went to see her. What does she say to you? Because to me, she did not commit to a peacekeeping mission. We have understood what she has said, but we think that the situation has changed. Since the 5th of December, the situation is not as it had been foreseen. The situation has changed and the country is so vast, the whole country has become a powder keg. But we think that with the international community, a UN peacekeeping force could really respond to the size of the country and also to material means. And the African forces that are set up do not have the means, we must say the truth. Others are traveling on foot and there is no means of communication. So for us, we want this to stop in a lasting way so that the fires are really put out and the population is saved. You make a strange couple. On the one hand, you've got Christians and Muslims killing each other in the Central African Republic. On the other hand, here you are, the head of the Catholic Church, uh, the Muslim leader of the Central African Republic. Why have you got together 
and are you making any difference on the ground? We are together to first prove to international opinion that the crisis is not religious. It is a military and political policy where the religious temperament has been used for some people in order to reach their objectives, which is power. We are in a symbiosis, the minister and I, the imam and the archbishop, for us to mobilize the believers together so as not to accept the crisis becoming a religious crisis. Now, most people think that it is already a religious crisis, a religious war, and that the killings are unstoppable and that the two communities are forever going to be apart. Have Christians and Muslims in the Central African Republic always been enemies? No. No, if we look well into the past. In my childhood, at the time of the Christmas holidays, we shared our toys with Muslim friends. At the time of Ramadan, we played. In the past, we have never been enemies. We were brothers. Let's find our origins again. If we don't know where to go, let us recall where we come from, where we brothers have been, and let us stay together. The head of the UN uh, Human Rights Organization has said that CAR is at a very, very difficult and critical point right now, that it could become a Rwanda-style genocide. Does that concern you? Do you think that that's possible? The way to avoid this drama that we call genocide, that we have set to work to reduce tension, to reduce hatred, to also reduce intolerance so that the crisis does not become general. Supported by all the countries in the world, the United States, who first signed the letter about this genocide, to support the military force, which is set up to disarm the groups that are fighting for power in order to allow us to bring all those who are angry around one table for a true reconciliation. Archbishop, the Christians, vigilantes, militias are committing almost the majority of the killings right now. I know it started uh, because of the Selekas, but the so-called anti-Balaka Christian vigilantes are on a terrible killing spree. What are you saying to them as head of the Catholic Church, and are they listening? So, what I say to them is that if we let ourselves be led by violence, we are advocating violence, and it is a vicious cycle of reprisals, and we will never stop, and we are going to have to stop. But if we stop, it is not a weakness. It's rather that we want to give power to love, power to forgiveness, power also to responsibility, and we are going to have to stop. Are you afraid, as I asked the Imam, about a Rwanda-style genocide happening in the CAR? No, I'm not afraid. I think that the two of us, we have all alerted and we think that we have uh, to take it seriously what is happening in the Central African Republic. And we are all pleading for new forces to arrive in the Central African Republic to stop that violence, to stop the devil's friend and to allow the poor citizens of the Central African Republic to live in peace. Currently, they cannot live in peace. They are terrorized and they are hidden in fear. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. I wish you good luck. Merci. 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 Muslim-owned homes in the Central African Republic are being destroyed. French troops on patrol are finding nothing but walls, and even those are falling apart. Attacks by the Christian anti-Balaka militia has many Muslims on the run leaving their belongings and property for looters. <laughs> Even those who aren't Muslim are becoming victims. This Christian woman has had enough. I leave because of the tension. I can't stand it any longer. Yesterday, the anti-Balaka, they broke me, particularly the anti-Balaka girls. They destroyed my house. They took everything worth taking that they found inside. Why? Because I had a Muslim man as a lodger. Meanwhile, President Catherine Samba Panza visited a Bangui monastery where 15,000 displaced people are sheltered. In front of a roaring crowd, she said security remains a top priority. One by one, I'm going to make sure all neighborhoods will be secure. The fighting in the country has displaced almost one million people.
Some lynching in Bongi today highlights the difficulties in returning order to Central African Republic. Some viewers may find the following images upsetting. About 20 uniformed soldiers repeatedly stabbed a man they had accused of being a former Seleka rebel to death before dragging the body through the streets. The corpse was then dismembered and torched before crowds. It happened just metres from where soldiers had earlier been listening to a speech from interim president Catherine Samba Panza. She was representing re the army to the nation after it effectively disappeared during the chaos that followed a rebel takeover last year. Samba Panza had warned that those responsible for all atrocities would be held to account and vowed to secure the majority of the country within a month. What used to be a humdrum suburb of Bangui? These days, death comes easily here, and these Burundian troops are prepared for the worst. Everyone seems to have a weapon here, and the number of soldiers is not enough to disarm everyone. They have grenades and guns. The Burundians are part of the African peacekeeping mission known as MISCA. 5,000 or so soldiers sent in to stop the country sliding into genocide. The chaos began last March when Muslim rebels toppled the government. They terrorized this city for months before Christian militia swept in, bent on revenge. Hundreds have been killed since then, many lynched. The African force working alongside French troops are trying to stop the worst of the violence. They've had some successes, but not enough. There's no way in the world where you have a situation of 100% peace, but we can say that if yesterday, in December, we were at zero percent peace, we may be at 45 percent peace today, or let's say 50, and so we still have work to do. Some have accused the peacekeepers of standing by while people are butchered. On Wednesday, Miska troops had stood guard while the country's interim leader gave a speech. But at the same venue, they did nothing to stop government troops from lynching a man. Tumenta says it wasn't the role of his forces to intervene. That particular spot is not secured by MISCA. The MISCA forces that you saw there were the forces that accompanied the president of the republic into that place. And so we will not bear the responsibility of having not secured that spot because it was not part of us. MISCA is having more success bringing aid into the city. Twice, MISCA troops have escorted supplies from the Cameroon border, 600 kilometers away. The latest mission, a delivery on Friday. For MISCA, it's a much-needed piece of good news and a chance for commanders to honor their soldiers. Well, a show for the cameras and praise for the MISCA troops, but these peacekeepers still have to prove themselves to many people here in Bangui, and their mission outside the capital could even be more hazardous. Jane Keo, CCTV, Bangui in the Central African Republic. A new president hails the renaissance of a national army in the Central African Republic. This was meant to be a moment of reconciliation in a nation riven by interreligious violence that's left over 2,000 people dead. Catherine Samba Panza praised an army that had effectively disappeared from view during nine months of rule by Salika, the now disbanded, mostly Muslim rebel group. Within a month, she said, I would like to secure the majority of the country. Everyone will be responsible for their acts. I'm warning troublemakers who continue to sow disorder. Despite the presence of peacekeepers, the president faces a challenge. Christian militias formed after abuses by the mainly Muslim rebels have waged a revenge cycle of bloodshed. And no sooner had she spoken in the capital, Bangui, than some troops showed reconciliation was the last thing on their minds. A group of soldiers lynched a man they believed to be an ex Salika rebel. His lifeless body was then dragged nearly naked through the streets. Very unfortunate that that happened, that, uh, you know, we were not able uh, to quickly uh, intervene and then uh, uh, save it. But things happened so quickly that uh, we couldn't. Hello. They are the Antibalaka militias out to defend themselves their families and the vulnerable Christian population. This time, they appear battle ready to resist attacks from the armed Selika rebels.
It took much persuasion before we could gain their confidence and be allowed to film. The Antibalaka militias have gained an impressive reputation in the country, and now they have different battalions scattered across the country. Are you fighting for the Christian? Yagodo Sylvester is the commander of a battalion of the Antibalaka militias. He says his soldiers are strong, brave, and proud. We are upset because the Muslims were spared by the Selika. They killed people from every group. That's why we are unhappy. They kill, rape women, and steal. That's not normal. For now, Jotodia and Selika must leave the country before we can support the French troops or former peacekeeping efforts. After we chase out Selika, there will be no more rebellion or coup. Antibalaka are not rebels. We are revolutionaries of the country. Most of their weapons are locally made. But with this, they have carried out several retaliatory attacks against the Selika rebels. They are sticking to their guns and have refused to lay down their arms for any peace deal until Michel Jotodia and his Selika alliance are chased out of the country. Some of our citizens are also part of Selika, but Jotodia discriminated between Muslims and Christians. He favored only the Muslim rebels. He gave weapons to fighters from Chad to kill our people. If a member of your family was killed, will you forgive? We will never forget that. We will never forgive them. The Antibalaka militias enjoy the support of a large number of the rural population. Most of their basic needs like food, money and sometimes shelter are gotten for free. In return, they have vowed to defend the population even if it means with their lives. But not all of them are ready to die. This Antibalaka soldier was caught off guard. He took to his heels when he sighted our vehicle perhaps thinking the Selika rebels have returned. Now his commander says he will not tolerate any demonstration of lack of bravery. The Antibalaka do not really have the kind of weapons they would need to withstand the Selika rebels, but something they have working for them is sheer guts and their local charms. Femi Akonde, TVC News, Bangi. Over the past months, I have issued a number of public statements urging all groups in the Central African Republic engaged in the ongoing conflict to immediately cease the violence and warning them that those alleged to be committing heinous crimes falling within the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court could be held individually accountable. The plight of civilians in the Central African Republic since September 2012 has gone from bad to worse. My office has reviewed many reports detailing acts of extreme brutality by various groups and allegations of serious crimes being committed, which possibly could fall within the ambit of the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court. The information concerning these alleged crimes and the profound human suffering their cause is deeply concerning. The allegations include hundreds of killings, acts of rape and sexual slavery, destruction of property, pillaging, torture, forced displacement and recruitment and use of children in hostilities. In many incidents, victims appear to have been deliberately targeted on religious grounds. Following my office's analysis of the jurisdictional parameters regarding the situation in Central African Republic since September 2012, I have concluded that these incidents and the serious allegations of crimes potentially falling within the jurisdiction of the ICC 
constitute a new situation unrelated to the situation previously referred to the International Criminal Court by the Central African Republic authorities in December of 2004. I have therefore decided to open a preliminary examination into this new situation. Henceforth, my office's further efforts will be aimed at gathering and analyzing all the information necessary to determine whether there is a reasonable basis to proceed with an investigation into this new situation. My office's efforts will be coordinated with those of the African Union and the United Nations in the Central African Republic. In conformity with the complementarity principle, my office will also be engaging with the Central African Republic authorities with a view to discussing ways and means to bring perpetrators to account, including at the national level. Why don't we get up? Here. Petit moteur. Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Jessel Noor in Baltimore. France has deployed a thousand troops to the Central African Republic in what French officials say is an effort to stabilize the country. It's been in turmoil since rebels overthrew the president and seized power in March. Now human rights groups are accusing security forces and militias of torturing civilians as world leaders warn the nation is on the verge of catastrophe. Now joining us to give us an update on the latest from the Central African Republic is Fortuné Kingwala. He is from the Central African Republic, worked as an investigator at the U.S. Embassy in Central Africa. He's currently a board member for U.S. SEWA, a Central African Association based in the U.S. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So um, we, wanted to, we wanted to get your take on the latest uh, developments. Um, the mainstream media is really emphasizing this as a conflict between the Muslim minority and the Christian majority. What do you, what do you feel is the, the catalyst for the, the violence right now? Um, I may say that um, what the media are saying um, as a conflict between, uh, a religious conflict between um, uh, Muslims and, uh, and Christians is, um, it, it's wrong. You know, let's, let's not be afraid to, uh, to say it. it's wrong. It's true that uh, we have violence going on, and we need to go to the roots of all of this to, to understand it. Uh, we need to, to know that um, when uh, Ubangi Shari, the former name of uh, the Central African Republic, was uh, created, uh, 
But France did not have uh, the intention to develop this uh, this uh, this large um, uh, piece of land um, as as big as a Texas, uh, roughly. Uh, it was um, a reservoir, you know, of um, of uh, minerals and of uh, gold, diamond, uh, timber. Um, this is what uh, Central Africa uh, was meant to be, just a reservoir of uh, mineral resources. Can you bring us up to speed, um, kind of jumping forward to, to today? You know, France is arguing that um, the only way to stop this violence is through military intervention. Um, what's your response to that? This is absolutely true. We, we are into a situation where I do believe Central Africa are not able to uh, to solve the situation. It's it's at, out, I mean, truly out of our hands. Um, we've got the president bringing foreigners, foreigners, to protect them, protect to protect to protect them against who? Their own population? No, they should be. They should understand. Like, okay, my time is over. I need to go to fair election. If I lose, that's fine. But at least my country is in peace. They didn't do it. But as they didn't do it, he brought, he brought us a, a, a Mbemba's troop. But they didn't do it, he brought us a Chadian and South Africans. And now who? Njochoja is bringing rebels from um, 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 Bozize, from Chad, from um, uh, uh, Sudan. And it's just out of their hands. We cannot control it. And it's, it's absolutely true that right now we need that intervention. But critics would say that France is only motivated, they're not, they're not motivated, motivated by the humanitarian intentions, they're only motivated in their quest for mineral and natural resources. Um, here is, um, that's a very, very delicate question. Because if, if, if I go this way, it's like, uh, I will not recognize, you know, the importance of what France is doing now, what the international community is, um, community is doing now. You know, first of all, I want to acknowledge that we really, truly need this help. But also, <clears throat> this help will not be there to get, uh, forever. We, Central African, have to understand that it's more or less a ceasefire allowing us to sit down and talk to one another and to speak the truth and to stick to our decisions. Now, to come back to that question, we started, as Central African, we started to warn the international community long time ago that we are going to chaos. But in the media and the international community, we need a certain amount of, um, of a drama, of tragedies to react. This is where we are. Now, you said France is not really seeing the humanitarian side of the question. It's going to be a sort of ingratitude to say yes. It's going to be. But it's also a high politics. France could have intervened much earlier. I do believe, and I'm responsible of my words, and I might be wrong, but France went to Mali. I don't think it's because of the Malians. It's not because of uh, jihadists. Let's not forget that Niger, where France is getting a uh, Almost all of his uh, uranium was attacked. We got, I think, four workers. They were kidnapped. Mali is next door to uh, to, 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 uh, to, to to Niger. I think France's interest was at um, were at stake. That's why they went there. And of course, we will put it at humanitarian and everything. And it's the same thing with Central Africa. It's the same thing with, with the Central Africa. Now that the international community is aware of that situation, France is back with us.
We'll certainly keep following developments in the Central African Republic. Thank you so much for joining us for this interview. Thank you.